welcome back. Now, we're starting off with a look at ending agitations in the Niger Delta. You've already seen some of our guests seated here. <laughs> but the issues in the Niger Delta have been on the front burner for a while, and all sorts of conversations here and there. The struggle for the development of Niger Delta has remained a staple subject for heated controversies being caused by some leaders for the restructuring of the region as a way of resolving the crisis. On November 1, the Niger Delta elders met with the president and presented a 16-point agenda to him. Now, that agenda included things like the presidential amnesty program, the law and justice issues, effects of increased military presence in the Niger Delta, the Ogoni cleanup and environmental remediation, the maritime university issue, and critical infrastructure in the region, all on and on and on, 16-point agenda. But at the end of the day, is this what is needed to end the situation in that region? What do the people there want? What can Nigeria what can Nigeria provide? Who should be held accountable for what? Because that's another angle of the conversation. So this are some of the things we'll be looking at today. And to help us dissect this, I have Norua Edokbolo, development consultant. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Mr. Tony Mofereku is of the Shekri National Youth Council, an ambassador of the Youth Council. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Some of you know him as Gandoki, <laughs> the comedian. And Mr. Osita Okechuku, DJ of the Voice of Nigeria and an APC chief team. Thank you for joining us from Abuja Studios. Okay, so we start our conversation today. Let me begin with you, Mr. Ereku. Um, you are from the Niger Delta, obviously. So why are the agitations still on in the Niger Delta? Well, um... One thing that is going on now, the same set of people that is going and going and going, that same set of people are still the people the federal government is still calling to like come and negotiate. They have been negotiating since for long. What are they negotiating? I don't even, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> we the youth, we don't understand. You see the youth and my restiveness. Niger Delta, kidnapping, bombing of a uh, pipeline, and Niger Delta youth, we are useful. It's just that our leaders don't know how to use us. We have talents. We have educated youth, sport, entertainment. Mm. This, this whole thing is just like, okay, of self-interest. Let me get my own share. That's just the problem. Self-interest yeah. on the part of... Let me get leaders. my own share, my own share. Oh. It's all about themselves, yes. is it? Yes. The leaders of the Niger Delta. Yeah. It's all about, um, we don't really have good leaders. Now, this meeting with the president on the 1st of November, were there, were, were there any representatives of the youth? No, it's only the elders. Was there any kind of um, engagement with the youth to discuss what they should go no. to that meeting with? No. No. Okay. Now, Norwa, yeah. um, many people have called for restructuring of Nigeria, and they say that that is the only thing that can take care of all these things that we're seeing, mm -hmm. all these things that are manifest. No. What are your permit me to do this we need to go on a very quick break all right okay. and we'll come back you answer that question right. please don't go away okay the niger delta region has been described as the goose that lays the golden eggs but years of neglect have led to the degradation Welcome, Welcome back. back. I, um, I had asked um, 
Norua a question about restructuring Nigeria. True. Is that what we need to sort out all this? Thank you very much. Um, you know, when I thought about this, ideally, restructuring is the way to go. But Nigeria is such an insincere entity that, you know, we're like um, ostriches Absolutely. who are not willing to tackle the real problem. Because whatever we do will be like a palliative measure. Because if you go to the very beginning of the agitation, it has to do with we want to have control. We should be a federal, you know, a federal republic of Nigeria. But unfortunately, um, we haven't been able to come to the table and discuss the real issues. So yes, restructuring ideally would be the, the way to go. But I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Because the, the players that we have, the executive, the parliament, etc., etc., and look, just like um, Gadoki said, there's a lot of me, myself, and I, you know, in the Nigerian equation. So until we get that out of the way, we're going to just be, you know, um, nipping at the boards so while the main problem remains un unresolved. Um, let me bring in um, Mr. Okechuku. Um, some say that these agitations are not justified, that the Niger Delta is a part of Nigeria and each part should contribute to the development of the nation. What are your thoughts? Well, Mr. Kuchiko, did you hear me? I, uh, thank you. Yes, partially. Partially, but uh, let me start by trying to address the matter raised by Tony Eruku. That is, uh, the problem is basically about self-interest. Those who place their personal interests above the interests of the Niger Delta region, and by extension, the interests of the country. That is the greatest obstacle to the development of the Niger Delta and also the country as a whole. Otherwise, if you look at the 16-point agenda, President Muhammad Buhari from the onset started with addressing the Ogoni cleanup recommended by the United Nations. Before even the meeting, before any meeting with anybody, he had already started that. And the issue of the infrastructure, the Niger Delta is also top on the agenda before that meeting. If you go through even the, the, the 30 billion being borrowed, about $500 million being borrowed is for the east-west road. Because Mr. President said he must complete that road because that road touches the nerve center of the region of the Niger Delta. So I, when you talk of uh, the 16-point agenda, I think it's on the top, top agenda of Mr. President before that meeting. And it was also good that the meeting was held uh, but when Tony said that youths were not represented, I remember a meeting with uh, Ibe, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, on his activities in the build-up to that meeting. And then we asked him about the youths. And he told us the position of the youths in the Niger Delta and the several meetings I've held uh, with uh, the youths in the Niger Delta over amnesty and others. And uh, at that meeting as well, youths were represented. It might not be the group that uh, Tony represents. So on the whole, the issue of the Niger Delta has been on the top agenda of most Nigerians. If we remember the UMPADEC that was constituted by the then General Ibrahim Babangida's regime, a lot of money was also invested in that ex exercise. Even the NDDC, a lot of people forget that the NDDC Act is the only single act since will come to democracy where the president was vetoed by the National Assembly. President Obasanjo had no signature in that in the NDDC Act. It was late Chuba Okadibo as the president of the Senate that drove that uh, the percentages the federal government, the Obasanjo then disagreed with must be included in the Act. And he got the North, the East, the West parliamentarians to support him. And when the then President Obasanjo rejected the, the bill, 
it came back to the National Assembly and it was passed. So, so the point of the matter is that the trajectory that is hampering the national director will be referred to what Tony said, that the day we, especially those in the region, start placing public interest of the region on the front burner, that is the day we are working towards the development of that region. Because if you look at how much that was expended, even the Abacha regime, in their, in their preparation for the 1999 constitution, he was the one that recommended at least 13% derivation. The word at least was italicized. So, so the point of the matter is that we had to start looking at how best to get corruption minimized, if not stemmed out, in managing the affairs of the Niger Delta and the country as a whole. It is corruption that had eroded the infrastructure development of the Niger Delta. It's corruption that eroded the educational advancement of the Niger Delta, the agricultural platform, the health uh, uh, equipment that was meant for that region today, the environmental degradation in the Niger Delta could be traced nothing less, both the oil companies, if they tell you how much they have expended to clean up the, the region, but there have been people who call themselves the warlords. Their business is to pocket monies that come to the Niger Delta region. We have to appeal to those people. Chuku, we have to appeal to them. If we Mr. Okay, to Chuku, them, it's okay to have on And most importantly, the infrastructure development of that. Uh, obviously, Mr. Okechuku is not hearing us. Uh, but we'll come back to Mr. Okechuku in a moment as our, our, our team helps to sort that out. But let's bring the conversation back here because there are some things Mr. Okechuku has raised which, in response to what... Um, Tony had said earlier that we want him to clarify because he says the people in the region, I'm paraphrasing here, are selfish until they begin to put public interest first. Then things cannot work. But Mr. Tony had said that they are inviting the 